With a 38 centimetre rocket assisted mortar on a Tiger 1 chassis, this chonky kitty is wartime engineering gone mad. So let's have a close look at the Ryfield model's 135 scale Sturm Tiger. So let's review who RFM is. Ryfield models began manufacturing 135 scale armour kits in 2015. A relative newcomer, they are based in Hong Kong and now have almost 90 high quality armour kits in their range. A quick scan of their Facebook page will demonstrate the detail that they provide with many of their kits including photo etch, 3D printed parts and metal gun barrels. Ryfield's webpage has not only an extensive list of their kits but also their upgrade solution series. This series is a welcome option as it removes the guesswork out of choosing upgrades and ensures a perfect fit and what should be peace of mind for scale modelers of all skill levels. So let's start with the hull. Ryfield has used the popular bathtub style hull construction which certainly improves stability and strength. The detail here is accurate and crisp. Features include two piece lower sponson plates, weld seams, accurate side plates, internal hull features such as the torsion bar mounts, firewall and mortar shell rack mounting points. This level of detail is difficult to produce and Ryfield's done a superb job with this engineering. Next is the casemate. The obvious point here is the rolled steel texture that Ryfield has integrated into this piece. It will likely suit the beginner to intermediate skilled modeler. I suspect the more advanced artist is going to do their own texturing. The weld details and moulded bolt heads are acceptable in this scale. The quality of the texture for the rolled steel armour just demonstrates that Ryfield really are flexing their abilities to produce superior textures. Let's have a close look over some of the sprues. Here we can see the interior casemate front plate. Ryfield is reproducing this in two pieces so we have a reasonable facsimile of this thick piece of frontal armour as well as a highly detailed interior section. There's the engine deck covers and grills as well as nicely detailed mortar gas exhaust grills. Many of the generic Tiger 1 parts are generally well molded. However, the keen modeler looking for a high level of accuracy may want to do some detailing here. The engine exhaust tips are a little thick, for example. I'd probably cut those out or replace them. The final drive covers look great and will be amazing once you cover them in paint, dry pigments and weathering products. Well, let's take a look at the road wheels, drive sprockets and the idler wheels. They're pretty accurately detailed. To be frank, it's difficult to get these wrong, I suppose, but Ryfield have been providing these with their other Tiger 1 kits, so it's no surprise that they're taken straight from them. The tracks here are individual link and link type. There's going to be a lot of work for anyone to put these together as the track guide teeth are all individual pieces as well. Whilst the track pieces themselves are really crisp and the holes for joining them are clear, there's still going to be a lot of sprue gate cleanup. Well, at least you won't have to drill out the holes like we do with some metal track manufacturers. I'm looking at you here, fuel model. The clear parts for this kit include the top plate of the casemate. As there is the partial interior included, this provides an ideal solution for many modelers to viewing all of the efforts you've put in to build and weather the interior. I'd probably paint this myself, but it's a welcome option from Ryfield. There's not much as far as decals for this kit, but that's to be expected with a Sturm Tiger. Included in the box is a bag of the 38cm mortar shell cases. This gives us the option to use them as fired or unfired as the warhead and case are two separate parts. The included photo etch sheet contains all the necessary tools and accessories that you will need. It's a thin sheet so it will be easy to bend into shape. Also included is a strip of copper wire and two poly caps. Ryfield has produced a wonderful instruction booklet for this kit. Sure, it's not up to wingnut wing standard, but who is nowadays? It does have everything that we would expect, such as full parts listing, detailed step-by-step -step instructions. But what's really appreciated are the coloured callouts for specific options or difficult construction phases. I find it interesting to see that the partial interior section gets a lot of attention here, and so it should. The size of those mortar shells combined with tricky storage racks is a potential weakness of this kit. Incorrect fitment will mean the casemate roof will not fit correctly and that's been evidenced by other YouTube videos you can find on this kit. Caution needs to be applied here to ensure correct fitment and prevent you from simply getting frustrated and throwing this kit across the room. It happens. 
The painting guide has three colour schemes, starting with an ambush pattern, a Dunkel Gelb colour scheme, and finally the expected three-tone late war pattern. Support from Ammo by MIG provides specific colour references. And finally we get to the rear cover, which has a high quality digital print of the box art. You might like to have it framed and hung on your hobby wall, or not. So in summary, let's look at what we've got. The bed. Well, there's lots of parts, and that's quite typical of Ryfield kits. They do over-engineer them in that way. Uh, this means that this kit really isn't aimed at the beginner modeler. There are some tricky sections in building this kit. The mortar shells and the mortar shell holding racks need to be given attention. Uh, if that's not done correctly, then that top plate to the casemate isn't likely to fit well, and this will just end up in tears. The good. There's lots of parts. Strangely, it's both a pro and a con. The intermediate to advanced model is going to end up with a kit when built that is very detailed. There's a partial interior. One of the biggest issues that armor modelers seem to have now is that full interior kits are just a lot of work and not really aimed at the majority of modelers. Most kits have almost no interior in them. And what we complain about is the fact that when we present a kit with hatches open, there's nothing really to look at inside. The partial interior of this kit really does overcome that issue. It's the best of both worlds. The details in this kit are very, very good. I'm not gonna say first class. There are better kits on the market as far as detail, but this is certainly above average. What do you get in the box? Well, there's photo etch, poly caps, copper wire for detail, big mortar shells, unique subject, individual track links, and above all, it's on a Tiger One chassis, and that's just cool in itself. Okay, let's look at what really matters now, and that's price. How much are you going to have to invest to get this kit? In Australia, it's been selling for between $77 to $85. Uh, I recently bought it for 66 in American money. That's what, $2.60. Uh, yeah, that's obviously an exchange rate joke. Um, really, this is a mid-price kit. Uh, it's certainly more expensive than a 1970s Tamiya kit, and it's certainly cheaper than, say, a Meng Mark V male tank kit. It sits somewhere in the middle for pricing. But with all the things that you get in this kit, that means it's great value for money. Is this peak Ryfield? This is a 2019 release. It's at the period where Ryfield had really stepped up their game and were offering quite a lot in the box for the money invested. Is it peak? Yeah, I think it is. I think this is the point where value for money, interesting subject, what else could we want? But at the end of the day, look, it's a Sturm Tiger on a Tiger One chassis, a German cat. It doesn't get cooler than that. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe as it helps me to make more videos and provide content you enjoy. Remember to build models, not just add them to your stash. Go out and support your local hobby store if you can, and I'll see you in the next one.